Alright, another draft physics video presentation. Alright, I guess this is the no-brainer edition. I mean, you all have no brains, no integrity, no capacity to reason at all. I'd be better off talking to seven-year-olds, maybe, eight-year-olds. Uh, obviously, you've all drunk a lot of lead paint, and your brains are shit. And it's just, there's no other reasonable explanation. You just can't think at all. Um, so I'm going to play the Physics Girl video again, just to re-emphasize what isn't being understood. That's just so obvious that nobody with a brain could miss it. I mean, you know, you, you people... I just can't even imagine if aliens actually did show up. I never thought we were this humiliatingly stupid, but you really are humiliatingly stupid. Oh, all right. So anyway, I'll just read one little stupid comment here. Uh, do you disagree with Ligarian and Hamiltonian mechanics? I disagree that there's any such thing as a rational fourth dimension. I mean, a fourth dimension that could be rationally tied to the other three dimensions. They all have features in common, uh, you know, namely being 90 degrees to each other. And a fourth dimension can't in any way connect. Okay, so it's like mating uh, mice with... Uh, frogs or something. It just doesn't going to work. It's just too silly. Let's see. They are equivalent to Newtonian mechanics, i.e. F equals MA. I don't know how it's possible it could be uh, equivalent when it's uh, not three-dimensional space and it's, you know, <laughs> absolute bullshit. So, okay, go ahead and tell me it is. Fine, 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 fine. You believe that. Okay. Uh, that's special. Anyway, also, I can't find any sources which say that people ever said that E equals MV squared. Um, but let's understand first that the E equals MV squared is how it started, and then sometime later they put a half in front of it. Okay, so, so, but I played the history person's video, okay? I mean, she spends a month researching what she's saying, okay? Uh, they made the Nova documentary about Einstein and portrayed the whole scene. I mean, is there some doubt that they were saying that E equals MV squared? Now, they might have been saying it's approximately, okay? So that's the doubtful part. But there wouldn't be any sense in saying it's proportional to. Do you understand? There's no, there's no two things that are different that you're proportionally con connecting, like, say, resistance and heat. You could say there's a proportional um, relationship between heat and resistance because they both go in the same direction. <laughs> but momentum doesn't travel with this EV squared thing. So you really can't compare it to momentum. It's kind of explicitly saying energy, you know, mostly equals, uh, you know, but I, I'm not going to argue the point. I mean, I, you know, yes, they said approximately maybe. I don't know. They didn't put a hard equal sign, I'll agree, at first. But they clearly have it now, so there's no doubt about it, all right? So, um, and again, I showed the history. The history is as ugly as you can get, right? The history basically is they took two experiments that are guaranteed to give you the wrong answer, clay and shooting things off a cliff, right? They did the shooting things off a cliff experiment and said, look, the thing that has more velocity goes further, well, yes, that's because things fall at the same rate in gravity. So obviously the thing with more velocity will go further because it has the same amount of time to get there and it's going faster. So of course it'll go further, but it'll land with less energy. I mean, <laughs> God damn. And people don't think Newton knew this, which is just hilarious, right? Like somehow they're going to tell Newton he was wrong when... This was Newton's life, this experiment. I mean, that experiment was like so obvious. I mean, Newton did four million of those experiments. He knew that weird little fact. He wasn't unaware of the fact that things shoot off cliffs further. I mean, this is so ludicrous. I can't get through it without going insane. This conversation is ludicrous. That I have to explain this to you idiots? Fucking A. Well, anyway. Also, I can't find any source that says that E equals MV squared. Again, let's understand the formula now is one half MV squared. 
Oh, I can only find sources saying that E is proportional to mv squared. And how would it be proportional? In what sense would it be proportional? Explain to me when they say it's 100 joules of energy, how they're in any way talking about a proportional relationship. How, do you, how are you proportional to 100 extra joules of energy? How, where's the proportionality? What are you talking about? Oh, fuck. I mean, this is just such bullshit on top of bullshit on top of bullshit from you people. All right. Uh, this one should be it, I think. No, what's a photon? That ain't it. No, nope, that ain't it. It's probably this one. Yeah, that's a physics girl. All right, so we're at the point where she's going to start doing this incredibly stupid math. And it's just so obviously stupid, irrational, insane. No one has pointed it out except for me. Okay. Um, they show this comment first, but that's obviously just YouTube playing the liar game. <laughs> you know, it's obviously not the first comment. And here, this imbecilic comment for which there's no, I don't know how anyone knows what the fuck they're talking about. It has 53 thumbs up. It says, she attract, she protect, but most importantly, she collide. Ick. What the fuck could that possibly mean? I mean, I don't even want to look. You know, <laughs> but, but I mean, 53 thumbs up for that? Whatever that is? Oh, fuck. Fuck, but not a single other reference to the fact that this doesn't make any fucking sense. Nothing, 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 nothing saying, hey, you know, how does this make any sense? How can you conserve the momentum and still have crushed the trains and flew pieces all over the place and lost half the energy? How can you lose half the energy and still have the same momentum? Nobody, not one single person will sit there and say, that doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> no one? I, I'm, I'm just, you know, I guess this is a hopeless task. I mean, there's just no point in reasoning with the human race. You are brain broken. You just don't have any. But this is just, you don't need hardly any. I, don't, I can't imagine how much brains you actually need to be able to say, <laughs> Yes, you can't have the same momentum and then say you lost energy. It's nonsensical mush. <sighs> Kinetic energy is lost. Some of it escapes as heat. Oftentimes it goes into the object's mechanical deformation. Like if you throw an egg oh, against the... Sorry, let's also, get back to the math. Zero. Okay, so you heard her say it. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. It, it retained the same momentum, but it deformed and pieces flew off and heat and all kinds of stuff stole all of the energy. But it has the same momentum. looking at types of collisions. So let's look at inelastic collisions first. So first, let's understand. Elastic doesn't make any difference at all. All you're talking about is how efficiently is energy transferred between objects. That's it. Objects collide and they lock together and move as one. A classic example, this can help us wrap our brains around. <clears throat> classic example could be bumper cars, could be a million different things in which the collision transfers the energy. And that's all you're trying to say is what, how is the energy, how efficiently is the energy transferred from one object to another object, period. And is trains, like those little toy trains with the magnets. Imagine two train cars rolling on a track and then hitting and linking up. It's classic because it's simple. So let's, let's model it. Give me a good arc. <laughs> so two trains. The only good news is, is she's only got 23,000 views for this video, which really sucks. Uh, you know, for somebody who has a million point seven five subscribers, yeah, that view number sucks. So um, that's the only that's the only thing I can take out of this. Is <laughs> this is the only good news? Oh, this is so. Fun. Cars on a track. Mm -hmm. We'll say that their masses are m one and m two. One of them is still so v two equals zero. And the other one is moving with a velocity v1. So we could do this by just having two different trains, okay? One with the heavy, twice as heavy, one, you know, half as heavy, and just have one of them move into the other one. And, you know, 
will just pretend that everything's, you know, a, a thought experiment, that, that there's a complete transfer of the momentum, right? <laughs> so again, there's so many ways you could do this same experiment. You tug of war, you could do it by having them run into a spring. I mean, I've, well, I've already illustrated all this, but again, let's just understand what she said so there's just no confusion. So then they collide and they stick together. Wow. So they collide and they stick together and they begin moving as one object with a new mass of m1 plus m2 and a final velocity vf for v final. Here's the question that you can solve in a problem like this. Given the initial masses, m1 and m2, and the initial speed, v1, what will the final velocity, vf, be? Likely. Okay, and obviously, the way she's going to figure this out is to use note Newton's math. I don't know why, because obviously it's wrong. So why would you use it? Why is momentum even meaningful anymore if it isn't a representation of energy? If momentum isn't energy, why do we even care what the momentum is? It can't mean anything. It's not the real energy. Said our key idea is conservation of momentum. If we add up the total momentum of the two cars before the collision, that's going to be the total momentum of the coupled cars after the collision. And it wouldn't be, though, if one of the cars, you can sort of understand, right? I don't know. I, I guess I'll draw it because, you know, I really have to be clear about this, right? So you people really understand what she's saying. Okay, she's saying two completely different things happened. You know, completely different she one second is saying the two trains transferred energy perfectly and the next minute she's saying no the two trains crashed into each other they crushed the heat flew off pieces hit the conductor i mean it was terrible terrible awful fires a big tragedy and half the energy was lost she's saying those two things were the same reality all right, this is more than just a bent space thing, you know, where you have your little frame of perception. These are, she's saying an explicit thing about one reality. She's describing it in two entirely different ways. Oh, amazingly silly. Oh, fuck. This is physics. Accepted physics. Let's be clear. This is now accepted reality. This is what smart people say. This is the kind of crap smart people say. Okay, and us dummies. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. yeah, we're really stupid if we don't get it because it's so smart. Oh, fuck. All right. So, so, so it's kind of a simple scenario, right? You have. <clears throat> a certain amount of momentum, which really just equals this mass times velocity thing. And that's the truth of it. <clears throat> and it moves into something else and it transfers the momentum. Okay, so the momentum is transferred to the new object. Um, <clears throat> and the fact is, is she's going to claim that it was transferred successfully. That it all got there. Right? So you had... 12 times 6, you could say here, well, let's say 1, uh, just to make it simple. And then you had 2 times 6 here. So the velocity was 6, the mass was 2, 1, velo one mass times 12 uh, velocity. All right, so it's a, these are simple vectors, as I've pointed out. Momentum is a vector, it's just a line. <clears throat> and now, what if I said, okay, well, I put a stick on the track, and so then the car had to run over the stick right well the fact is that stick is going to mean it's not going 12 miles an hour anymore it's going to lose a little bit of velocity see it's not going to lose mass i'm not going to the stick isn't a big enough bump to knock mass out but it does degrade the velocity a little bit you see that little stick will actually take a little bit off of there now it's only 11.83 or something right so that one little stick you know and so this will have to go down to five point you know uh, seven six because of that stick see so any anything that degrades this transfer means these numbers have to go down this number has to go down so if I deform or I make a single little spark fly off or a little tiny noise comes out of it or anything all of that is like a stick and it takes away the velocity which means you can't transfer the velocity. See, if you lose the velocity, you can't transfer it to the other object. 
So the only way you can have a perfect transfer of the momentum, that is conserve the momentum, conserve it in the sense of not lose it somewhere, well, the only way you can do that is you have to not crush anything. You have to not run over any sticks. You have to not throw any of your little pieces off. You have to not make any big sounds. You have to make no heat. If you made heat, you lost momentum, and this number has to go down. Now, that is the ABCs. I mean, that is not, you can't even call that Newtonian it, I mean, people a thousand years ago could probably figure this one out. I mean, this is duh. This is like handing somebody a bucket of water and you, you spill it all over the place and you say, here's a gallon of water. Well, yeah, it was a gallon when I left the house and well, it's not a gallon now, but let's just call it a gallon for the hell of it, right? We'll just call it a, an efficient transfer of a gallon of water, even though there's not a gallon in the bucket anymore. And it would be silly to call it conservation of water because I spilled half of it on my way. And that was obvious. And this is obvious. You can't say you conserved the momentum and somehow also created heat and sound and a whole bunch of extra fun stuff. You can't say that and call it rational physics. It's irrational babble. I just can't believe I have to make this video. And I have to so aggressively defend myself against the accusation that I'm insane for making it. I'm a crazy fucking nasty troll for pointing out something so fucking fundamental to the whole core of physics meaning anything. Because one of the cars is at rest to start out with, this problem is pretty simple. Because all the momentum before the collision is in the moving car, M1. Momentum is mass times velocity, so it's M1 times V1. And the momentum of this, T equals zero. And after the collision... So I don't know why we're doing this, right? I mean, if we have this new modern equation, it's so much better. It tells you exactly how many joules of energy it has. Why aren't they using that? Why are they, why are they playing with this silly momentum theory? when it doesn't give you the accurate definition of the living force. So let's remember, it was originally called the living force. Why? Because they couldn't call it anything rational because it isn't rational. <laughs> it's a fake. It's a phony. It's a fraud. There is no living force. Final momentum will be in the coupled cars moving together. P final equals the total mass times the final velocity. So M1 plus M2 times V final. So now let's give the car some masses. Say we give them the same mass, two kilograms. And we give the first car a speed of, say, 12 meters per second. Then we work it out to get a total. In right. So we understand 12 meters per second when you only weigh one ton, let's say. And then it's six meters per second when you weigh two tons. And that's just the simple Newtonian factual reality of the universe. That always is the case. Electron bang into electron, proton bang into electron. Uh, atom bang into atom, galaxy bang into galaxy. This always works. Always, always, always works. And yet somehow we have to change it. Because it always works. Initial momentum of 2 kilograms times 12 meters per second equals 24 kilogram meters per second. And that equals our final momentum, which is M1 plus M2. So she kind of cut it short. Instead of solving this one the same way, you know, she's just saying, well, we already know that uh, the final momentum is this, so let's go and just say this one has to meet that number. So, you know, so she's sort of cheating. M2, so that's 4 kilograms times V final. And in order to get 24, V final has to be 6 meters per second. So my V final equals 6 meters. So let's understand it's a 100% transfer of the momentum. So absolutely no other energy could have been in any way excreted by the cars. The only motion they have is their movement. All right. And if they do anything else... Okay, a single spark flies off of them and lights a fire. That has to come out of the momentum. 
anything, any sound, any anything, okay, any movement of any other material anywhere in the universe by these two cars colliding, it has to come out of the momentum vectors. It has to. There's no other source for it. You can't say it made a sound and didn't lose any speed. You can't say it banged into the other car and sparks flew off and it still c converted the momentum 100% successfully. None of that can happen. If there's any losses, it has to come out of that six miles, that six meters per second. That six meters per second has to go down. It has to. So clearly nothing was lost because she's saying it's six meters per second. She's saying it was an ideal collision. Clearly saying that. There's absolutely no rational way for any person to disagree. She's clearly saying it was an ideal collision. No losses. Zero. Absolutely zero. She didn't write 5.99999 meters per second. She wrote 6 meters per second. A 100%, not 99%, a 100% transfer of the momentum successfully to the second vehicle without a single spark being lost. Fact. That's what she's saying. Per second. So six meters per second. We ended up with half of the initial velocity, which makes sense because we said the two cars have equal masses and we only had one of the masses moving at the start. So now you've got double the moving mass at the end. So they must be going half of the original speed if momentum is conserved. Yes. If you successfully transferred all of the momentum. Yes. And if you successfully transferred all of the momentum, it means you didn't run over any sticks. You didn't squish any bugs. You didn't make a single little whimper of a sound. And that's our basic inelastic collision problem solved using conservation of momentum. But what about conservation of energy? Is kinetic energy conserved in our system here? So what is kinetic energy? Well, apparently it's not real. It's actually living force energy. So let's understand the history. Okay, this formula is the living force formula. Surprisingly, no. Let's see why. So amazing, right? So it has a certain amount of energy. It collides with something else and transfers all of its energy successfully. And yet we somehow lost something. And if we did it the other way around, again, if we had a heavier thing hit a lighter thing, okay, their theory says we made kinetic energy. We started with only 100 units of kinetic energy, and we will create 200 units of kinetic energy. So if she just turns this scenario right around, just turn it around the opposite way, have the heavier car convey all of its momentum to a lighter car, the theory is we made free energy. That's explicitly the consequence of this nonsense. By working out the math. Let's calculate the energies before and after the collision. Kinetic energy initial is just going to be one half mv squared. Before the collision, we only have the first car moving. So the total energy is one half m1 times v1 squared, which is going to be one half times two kilograms. So all I have to do is make this car lighter and go faster and it automatically has more energy. That's their theory of physics. They say Newton is full of shit and really you can make free energy by just making things smaller and making them go faster. Yeah times 12 meters per second squared, which works out to 144 joules after the collision. Right. So she's given an explicit number. Okay. And it would have been in 1750 when this was invented, this theory of living force, that number would have been 288 joules. That's how close they were to the truth when they invented it. <laughs> yeah. They were only 100% off. Yeah. Only. And there's so our final kinetic energy equals one half mv squared but my final mass is both masses together which equals four kilograms 
So this equals one half times four kilograms. And then my final velocity squared, so my six meters per second squared. And that equals 72 joules. Right. <clears throat> so you just heard you had a certain amount of momentum. You 100% conveyed the momentum, but somehow you lost half the energy. And if I just reverse the circumstance, I just make the heavy car hit the light car back again, I can get all the energy back. But I can't ever get it by hitting a light thing into a heavy thing. I can only get free energy if I hit heavy things into light things. Ugh, this is so pathetic. So we lost kinetic energy. So yeah, we lost energy even though we didn't. Even the momentum stayed exactly the same, we somehow magically, we lost. Momentum is, you know, gravity makes it, right? It makes things crash and make a dent in the earth and all that kind of crap. She's saying that power to make a dent in the earth was lost. She's saying it. There's less joules. That means you can make less of a dent. Do you really think it can make less of a dent and have the same exact momentum? Oh, fuck. What happened to the energy? Well, so what happened to the energy? So now she's going to give examples of what happened to the energy. And obviously the examples can't make any sense to anyone who knows fifth grade physics. Well, in an inelastic collision, when the colliding objects stick, some of the original kinetic energy is lost. Some of it escapes as heat. Okay, so as I already pointed out, we know that heat couldn't come from anything but the momentum vector. The momentum was the energy. The velocity is the energy, okay? The mass is half of it, but the velocity is the energy. So you have to lose velocity if you're making heat, right? You can't miss that, right? <clears throat> Certainly Newton would assert this to be true. And most of the physicists, frankly, from Newton to the present day would have said it. But a certain number of little fancy people in France decide to invent this fake physics. And, and it's in there, and now they're using it like it's real physics when it's complete bullshit made out of mistakes. It's not made out of anything rational. It's just made out of mistakes. They took a ferro cell and said, look, magnets bend light. They made a mistake. Oftentimes it goes into the object's mechanical deformation. So, deformation? So, again, so somehow you bent the metal, you made lots of sounds, pieces flew off, right? She's giving you an example of an apple exploding, okay, when it's hit by a ping pong ball, right? Did, 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 was any of that, could, does that make any sense? So, the ping pong ball is going 12 miles an hour and it shoots a bunch of pieces of apple all over the place, but it doesn't lose any momentum. It transfers successfully all of its momentum to the apple, and the apple leaves at whatever, six miles an hour. Is that what's going to happen? Of course not. The apple's not going anywhere. Okay, because all the other pieces are going somewhere. All the energy is being used up to shoot a bunch of pieces all over the place. Obviously, the momentum won't be transferred. There'll be no complete transfer of momentum here. That won't happen. The apple's not leaving at six miles an hour, right? It's not leaving at two miles an hour. It's not even leaving at one mile an hour. All of the momentum is going to be destroyed, breaking the apple into pieces. Like if you throw an egg against the wall and it deforms? There, did you see that apple go anywhere? And it deforms? Did because the apple go anywhere? No, because all the energy, or the tomato, was used up blowing it all over the place. So obviously you can't have it both ways, right? You can't have that tomato leave at six miles an hour and the tomato exploded. That's not rational, right? I mean, that's no brainer stupid, isn't it? Can't you just fucking admit that that's no brainer stupid? Nobody with any kind of reasoning skills could possibly think the two trains perfectly, 100% conveyed their momentum and they exploded and lost 100%, well, 50% uh, of the energy. 50% of the energy exploded away, okay, without being seen, of course, or anybody noticing it, but it exploded away and we kept the same momentum. Now, did any of that happen? Could any of that happen? Could reality 
actually be those two separate events? The tomato exploding and the tomato leaving at six miles an hour. Could that be possible? I just hate this fucking planet. This is disgusting that I have to make this video. This is disgusting that these idiots like Piro and all these other creeps on the internet can't admit this is idiotic physics. Profoundly idiotic. Not a little bit idiotic. This is profoundly idiotic. Energy isn't lost to the universe, but it is no longer in the system of the two things that collided, so we can't easily measure it. So <laughs> so what is, how does that make any sense? She just showed you it's splattering all over the place. That was her example. Deformation. Well, where was that in her uh, uh, drawing? Did she show the trains running over even a stick and losing momentum? No. Did she show us the spark that was created and we lost to the universe? Now she just says, well, we just can't see it. A whole bunch of energy, 100, you know, 100 joules of energy. You know, in the example, what is it? It's, uh, it's 87 joules of energy just disappeared, just phew, flew away. No, they didn't. <laughs> How can you believe they did? The point is, is those jewels never existed. The formula is nonsense. It has this insanely stupid, irrational bias towards things moving fast. Newton wouldn't. Newton was dead by the time they endorsed this crap. And of course, if he had, if he could dig out of his grave, he'd be yelling at you fuckers, saying, "What the fuck?" Are you, you're just this fucking stupid? I've been dead for 300 years and you got dumber? You literally got dumber in 300 years. Literally, factually. You are now less intelligent. The average fucking idiotic scientist is now actually less intelligent than they were 300 fucking years ago. Okay, there's nothing more I can say, right? I mean, it, there's just, it's futile. It's futile having conversation with you fucking brain dead pieces of shit. When you have a collision where things stick together afterwards, you can't use conservation of energy to solve those problems. And that's where the word. <laughs> like, like there's some rule. Oh, oh, <laughs> there's, there's no way for you to um, um, recognize, uh, even though they, they've done these experiments where they actually take a mouse or some other kind of vegetable matter and put it in a glass bowl and they actually count every single piece of energy that comes out of the system. And now she's just saying, no, you really can't do any of that. You know, we can't figure any of it out. It's mysterious. This living force energy stuff, it's really tricky. Yeah, the living force, hmm, fourth dimensional energy. Inelastic comes from. The objects that collide deform and they don't elastic. So she just said it again, didn't she? She just said it again. Well, what energy was used to deform them? Where did the energy come from, if not its momentum? Again, how can you possibly bend something or twist something or turn something or do anything if the original energy, the only energy the object has is its momentum, the only energy it possesses is its velocity? How can it have the same velocity and yet make something else move? How is that possible? Oh, fuck. Return to their original state. So, done with inelastic. Oh, oh, I don't know. So, there's just no doubt about what's being said, and there's no doubt it's nonsense, and I just. I, I, there's no point in making any more videos. There's no point in saying anything. You people are just too stupid. I don't know what. There's, there's, I don't know what. To, there's nothing to do. You will not accept any fact ever except what's in some Bible you read, right? This is all this is about. I mean, you'll never concede. Oh, yeah, well, Gary, it does look like that formula was completely contrived out of thin bullshit. Okay, I mean, a couple of silly French people did some silly experiments that really didn't get to the truth. They sat there with a little Ken Wheeler, you know, uh, a pharaoh cell and made assertions that light is bent by magnetism. La, 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 la. And it was absolute horseshit, and somehow that crap got written into real physics. And it just should have never happened. And you won't just concede that simple truth?
Fuck you people. You're despicable. I had to play the clip of Donald Duck, no, Daffy Duck, saying that to you know, Bugs Bunny. You're despicable. Implicable. Constickable. All that shit. You disgust me with substantial vigor, <laughs> with many jewels of disgust energy. Fuck. I mean, it's just you're just pointing out it's hopeless. You just really are just banging it into my head. It's hopeless, Gary. We're way too fucking dishonest. We're way fucking too stupid. There's no point in talking to us. We can't do reasoning. We can't be rational. Logic, we hate it. Um, you're just screaming that at me. You're just obnoxious toddlers eating your fucking religious poo. Yum, yum. Eat it up. <sighs> God. Oh, I hate this planet. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. <sighs> Please, aliens, do the right thing. Anyway, till the next time and such.